I am so happy, so delighted to be back to UOE. I used to come here when it was, you know that name? Yes. Chip. Uh, some years back. Um, yeah, we had a good relationship. We still have a good relationship with UOE. Like you had uh, the chairman mentioned, I studied in Moy University, your big brother. So I'm your big brother. Um, yes, I had many, many friends when I was at, the, at Moy University. Um, and we have maintained the relationship, the friendship up to date. Um, your, your, your former, former, former ancestor, chairperson, his name is Kefas Ndegwa, was my good friend. And um, this is the kind of relationship we had. Whenever we had Kairos course in Czech, and we did not have Kairos in Moimei, we used to ferry people from Moimei to come and do Kairos here. And whenever we had Kairos in Moi and Chef had not organized, we used to do that kind of exchange program. So I'm in a way telling you, those who are yet not convinced that you need to take the Kairos course, please, please consider, highly consider. I don't want to overemphasize, I think Bwana uh, Kairos has done a good, good job. Where is Bwana Kairos? <laughs> Praise God, I thank God for you, brother. It's not exaggeration, Kairos will change your life. It changed mine when I was a second year student at the university, I mean, more university. I, I had just finished second year and I didn't know what to do, but I, I didn't have much to do, kuna atacho. So I had decided to do business because I was studying what? Entrepreneurship. And so I had saved some money, um, wanted to go and do, uh, of course, entrepreneurship students, you are taught everything about business planning and stuff. Eh? And then the discipleship chairperson, her name is Doreen Simil, she asked, so you guys, what are you planning to do with your holidays? And I said, ah, business. Yeah? And I said, ah, okay, that's good, but I want you to consider something. There's a program called Voice of Truth. How many have heard about the Voice of Truth? Yes, and uh, for some reason, I had heard about the voice of truth. Thank you, bro. I had heard about the voice of truth because I had attended a program when I was in, when I had just finished high school in KU. It was called War, World Ambassadors for Redemption. And uh, we were told about this program happening in Shunem, in Embu. And uh, you know, I had heard about that, but when I joined Moi University and joined discipleship ministry with the likes of GK, have you heard of GK? Yeah. Yeshimo Karyuki? Yeah. And I got immediately engrossed in discipleship. And they told us about it and I attended. And that's where I did Kairos course. And my world lit up, literally. I loved evangelism. There was a brother, a very faithful brother in my church, um, back in Thika. And uh, he used to take me, as a young man, as a young boy, every Sunday after service, and we'd go to the town and evangelize in the streets. So there was a seed born in me, a seed that God was um, working on, this, a ministry God was working on, and this man, for some reason, he just picked on me, not any other young man, and uh, the, the, the gift was found. But when I did Kairos course, it all made sense. God, in a way, integrated, and today we are talking about integral missions or holistic mission. God integrated all that he wanted. I mean, he, he showed me very clearly, this is my mission. This is what I want you to be involved in. And no turning back. Bonus, if you uh, That is history, uh, just a, a background, so that we are on the same page. Bonus, as we said. So, I'm so happy to be back here and to talk to us about uh, holistic mission. All right, Let, let's believe and pray. Our dear Lord, we are before you this morning and we ask you to speak to us. We know you have a lot to reveal to us. And you know, like you dealt with your disciples, you told them, I have much more to tell you, but I can't tell you all of them at the same time. Lord, we ask you in Jesus' name that as much as you have purpose to let us know today, as much as you have 
desired to remind us that the very things that we know, Father, let your will be done. As we explore this topic, we pray that we will hear that still small voice and that our hearts will be ready. We will be ready to say, here I am, send me, O oh God. So we open ourselves to the ministry of the Spirit. For we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. There has been a growing discussion around what the mission of the church is. And uh, in the last three decades, there is an increasing awareness that the church exists not just for soul winning. The church exists not just for soul winning. The term integral mission or holistic mission comes in to correct a rather one-sided approach to mission. Okay? Um, when I say one-sided, there is a, a divide. Some people say, uh, when, when, they are, uh, when they, are, they are explaining mission, they will think about soul winning. Mount Elgon for Jesus. And at the back of your mind, you're just thinking about people coming to Jesus. You know, there is a 110 decisions to Christ. And that's all. Soul winning. You go for a crusade and uh, 291 souls came to the Lord. And we happy when that happens. It gives us great joy. True or not true? True or very true? Okay. It gives us a lot of joy. And um, for a very long time, let's call that the traditional approach to missions. Okay? But I, I want us to explore from the word of God and see, is that, is that all about mission? Is that the whole scope of mission? Okay? Now that's the one-sided bit. The other sided bit, uh, the other side of the coin is this. Um, there is a group of Christians, or a, I don't want to call it sect, there is another divide of Christians that uh, think that Christian mission is uh, just about social action. This is what I mean. I was in prison. You know, the, when Jesus comes, yeah, he will tell some people, I was in prison and you did not come to see me. I was hungry and you did not feed me. I was naked and you did not clothe me. You know that aspect of... And, and some will ask, Lord, okay, there are those who did it. Okay, and there are those who did not do it. So for those who did it, they will, they will be asking, Lord, when did, you, when, when did we see you in prison and visit you? When did we see you naked and clothe you? When did we see you hungry and feed you? And Jesus says, when you did this to one of these, you did it to, to me. So there is, there is these two extremes. One that looks at soul winning, and the other one looks at what? Social action. So, which has more priority? Social action, soul winning. That's the discussion I want us to have this morning. But as we see here, so when we talk about uh, integral mission, we are talking about both, and a very close look, a, 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 um, an examination into the life of Jesus, into the life of the early church, will reveal to you that Jesus did both. I love Jesus because he was a very balanced man. Very balanced. Praise the Lord. Uh, as you are aware, or as you do Kairos, you will become aware. He was not just a Messiah for the Jews. He was a Messiah for both the Jews and the Gentiles. Gentiles. What about the Jews? What kind of a Messiah did they expect? Our own Messiah. Okay? Our own Messiah. They were looking forward to a Jesus, to a Messiah who would save them from the oppression of the Roman rule. Okay? And these guys were breathing fire. Do you know there was a disciple called Simon the, the Zealot? 
you know zealots you know what they mean? people who are passionate very passionate for the messiah they are some of them are called zionists okay the, the rule of, of i mean the restoration of israel how can we be oppressed and we are the people of god you know so some of the disciples actually almost all of them had this expectation of a messiah who would just come and topple the government lord will you at this time restore the kingdom of israel do you remember such kind of discussion and some are saying lord i want you to do whatever we want we we'll ask you we want to sit on your right hand and you know those are the kind of thinking they had but jesus many many times he taught them he reminded them i am not just your messiah i am the messiah for them the world for the jews and the gentiles one has to feel very balanced by the way when you read your bible you will see that most of the miracles that jesus performed do you know among whom he performed the miracles jews or gentiles find out but i want to give you a hint it's among the gentiles praise the lord it's among the gentiles do you know where he set up his center of operation capital city of operation jerusalem find out where is it anyone who knows a town starts with c very good students capenaum capenaum was not a jewish town it was a gentile town why not go to jerusalem are you seeing the point all right but i want to invite you to the kairos course you'll understand much more okay what has the gospel to do with global issues like human trafficking sexual uh what what are you it sexual slavery xenophobia and racism i can't breathe do you remember what has the church to do what has the gospel to do with post election violence what has the church to do with governance you know what is happening in our country reggae can we stop reggae can we not stop reggae you know all those kind of discussions and many times you will hear uh, the, the country uh, i mean the church being accused the church is silent have you heard that where was the church during the post election violence i mean even the world expects the church to do something the church to say something bonus if you so you can see even as we continue it's not about it's not just about soul winning are we together it is i mean the mission of the church is holistic it is it is broader than we think amen what has the church to do with religious animosity you know there are parts of this world i mean this world is very religious in a way if not christians you are a muslim if not a muslim you are a hindu isn't it if not a hindu you are an atheist that's another religion that claims there is no god you are your god i mean and, and people are extremists there are those who would even kill for god what has the gospel to do with such you remember what was happening in south africa what normally happens in south africa every now and then xenophobia you know yeah fighting foreigners and things like that what has the has the church to do with war and refugee crisis you know about syria what has the church to do with um, the volcano for example that happened in congo the other day or the tsunamis that happen around the world every now and then and the earthquakes that are becoming more and more as the day progresses one has to feel what about disease and pandemics like the one we are having currently does the church has anything to do or we are just about mount elgon for jesus amen our understanding of mission and the implications of that understanding okay have a lot to do with how we as believers engage in the mission of god what as if you that understanding is very very important I, i have a question is you or is you is it 
Why am I Troy? Why am I Troy? The University of Eldoret or my University of Eldoret? You in? Why? Okay. So is it? I mean, is, is this to you a mission of church? And what does that mean? Okay? Are we deliberate on just seeing the big picture and engaging in mission in a broader sense or is it just about so many? Those are some of the questions I would want us to think about. Amen? I'm so glad about Mount Elgon for Jesus. Praise the Lord. This is a great, great step towards uh, this Christian union being a very missional city. And, and I will give you a very high percent in terms of uh, your engagement in missions. You're doing well. You missed a place to say amen. <laughs> but you can do better. Amen. But you can do amen. better. Amen. Christopher J. H. Wright defines mission as the dynamic process through which God will transform the earth he himself created now spoiled by human sin listen to this spoiled by human sin and the powers of evil into the new heaven and the new earth of God's redeemed creation you can write that Christopher J. H. Wright defines mission as the dynamic process underline the word dynamic and then it's not an event it's a process dynamic process through which God will transform again underline the word transform the earth he himself created but has now been spoiled by human sin and the powers of evil into the new heaven and the new earth of God's redeemed creation. It is an all-encompassing three-pronged mission. The mission of God has three prongs or three facets, if you like. Number one, it's for God. The mission of God is for God. He has this great desire to be worshipped globally among the nations. And Revelation 7, 9 will tell you this. After this, maybe the projection team can do this for us. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 7 and verse number 9, John the Revelator, after the 144,000, you remember? You know the ones, the 144,000, right? Yes. The ones that Jehovah's Witnesses say are the only ones who will get to heaven. You know that? You know that they are doctrine, you know that? Yes. Okay. And um, the Bible says this, After this, I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and in front of the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands, and they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They fell down on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen, praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen. That is. Then the elders asked, uh, asked me, this in white robes, who are they? And where did they come from? I answered, sir, you know. And he said, these are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night goes on and on. Brethren, if you read from chapter number 5 of the book of Revelation, you will hear, I mean, it's, it's a very, very beautiful scene in heaven. Worship happening in heaven. This is the greatest happening on the planet, even to date. Worship, the worship of God. Who is to be worshipped? 
who is being worshipped, that's the greatest Bwana Spirit. And we can talk about this until the cows come home. Bwana Sifiwe, he loves men. For uh, the thief comes to steal and to kill, but I came, I comes to, the thief comes to do what? Steal, kill and destroy. But I have come that you may have life and life in abundance. Bwana Sifiwe, that's it. That's what God wants for us. And we, we can talk about this a bit more. Holistic mission is all about life in abundance. Uh -huh. Praise the Lord. Amen. Holistic mission, let me ask you, brethren. When you hear people dying of famine, is that life in abundance? When you see people lost or in prostitution, there was a street here in, in, in Eldoret. It went into a jail street. Very... Um, Notorious for prostitution. Even it was. Did you Elisha? Prostitution in Elisha in Elisha. Amen. 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 And you must care Elisha. Amen. I mean, friends, when you just think about it, why would somebody sell his own body or her own body? You know, it's not just her. There are men who sell their own bodies. You didn't know. They are male and female prostitutes. That's how bad the world is. You wonder, why would somebody do that? Why would somebody do that? It's evil. It's a corrupt world. Satan has caught the minds of people, twisted them into despair, into pain, into suffering. And we are saying, Jesus came that you may have life and have life in abundance. So in our outreach, in our missions, please let's have that in mind. Let's have that in mind. It's not just a meokoka period. Hallelujah. I may get into the statistics of UOECU. A hundred and two souls to the Lord. Do we care about their life, their other life, you know, life in abundance? Are they experiencing life in abundance? Let me tell you, brethren, the gospel is costly. The gospel is costly. And when you hear give, or when you are told here in the Christian Union, please let's give. Don't think you are doing God a favor in giving a uh, hundred bob or even if it's a thousand bob. Bonus if you I know it's a sacrifice. But I want you to give that money with that kind of an understanding. When you, whenever, whether you are in CU or you go back home, and you hear this, give, you are giving to the kingdom of God. Please think about such a thing. What as if you will. Think about giving to the kingdom of God in a holistic manner. And the church ought to be involved in such things. When you see street children, do they bother you? As a Christian union, when you move around the streets of Belgorod, and there are all these street families. By the way, it's not just street children. It is street does it bother us as the church of Jesus Christ? Do we have a part to play in alleviating that kind of situation? Extreme poverty. Do we have a part to play? When you go to Mount Elgon, these are some of the sites you will see. What are we going to do? Praise the Lord. It is possible that when you are faced with human suffering, you despair and say, it is impossible. This is too much, oh God. You see? But, I would love to remind you of what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 28, the very famous verse of Great Commission. Eh? All authority has been given to, to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey all that I have commanded you and lo, I am with you always to the close of the age. That's it. When we have the Lord, we have everything it takes to change the world. What does it mean? Praise the Lord. The third aspect of the mission of God is against evil, against Satan. First John chapter 3 verse 8. 
I love this verse. I love verses that, I love the whole Bible. I love reading the whole Bible. I do that at least once every year. But in particular, there are some verses that strike you, eh? like the, the ones that reveal purpose. Those ones, I, I, I have a, fin, a high affinity of such. Eh? For example, why Jesus came. For the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. Very definite, very direct. I came to seek and save the lost. This one says, 1 John chapter 3, verse 8. He who does what is evil is of the devil. Because the devil has been sinning from the beginning. Then says, the reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. Hallelujah. The reason the Son of God appeared or was revealed was to destroy the devil's work. And Jesus Christ, up to date, is, in, is on a mission of destroying the works of Satan. And he, it's not the first time that he has, he has done this, okay? Uh, when you read Genesis chapter 3 and verse number 15, when Adam and Eve sinned against God and God was making pronunciations, eh? certain, certain statements that are very hard, my friends. When you read that, man, you wonder, you wonder, can we read? Why did these guys have to sin, you know? Why did Adam and Eve have to, to rebel against God? Anyway, he says, I will put to the, to the, to the serpent, he said, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and senior. And he will crush your head. You will bruise his heel and he will crush your, your head. That was prototype. I mean, uh, proto evangel. The gospel announced King Tambo way in Genesis that Jesus, the seed of the woman, would crush the head of the serpent. But this was fear. And that's why John John 3, John 1 John 3 in Atwambia, the reason why Jesus was revealed was to destroy the works of, of Satan. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And God is at work. And God has called you and me to join him in this mandate, in this task of destroying evil. And how is it, is it done? How does he want us to do this? Once, you know, the kingdom of God, the Bible says, is what? Righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's the kingdom of God. It's not a matter of eating and drinking. The Prince of Peace, he comes into our lives and reigns in us and pushes out darkness that was once in our hearts. He pushes it out completely. You loved sin. Now you see sin and run away. Senior. And who is able to do that if not Jesus Christ our Lord? Once you repented, you know, you know what true repentance is? The sins you once cherished, you now loathe it. You hate it. There is no one who can change a heart to do such things if not Jesus Christ. When you see injustices, you, you are not just um, you are not just there like helpless, I can't do anything, but you see injustices and you are moved with compassion, that like Jesus was moved with compassion and you want to act on a civil. Justice. The book of Micah chapter 6 verse 1. What does the Lord require of you, O oh man? Other than to love, seek justice, make her there. Now listen to what the Lord says. Raise, arise, plead your case before the mountains and let them hear. Uh, let the hills hear your voice. Go on. Listen to the Lord's lawsuit. You mountains and, and enduring foundations of the earth. Because the Lord has a case against his people and he will argue, argue it against Israel. Go on. 
My people, what have I done to you? Or how have I wearied you? Testify against me, the Lord asked him. Indeed, I brought you up from the... Go and read this chapter even more. And the entire book of Micah. And the entire book of Acts. Uh, not Acts. The entire book of... Um, there is uh, Amos. Acts, Amos. Amos. He will tell you. The Lord hates even people who do what? Use um, measures that have been tampered with. The Lord loves justice. The foundations of the Lord are what? Righteousness and justice. His throne is established on those. Praise the Lord. Are you following? When we talk about missions, it's not just about soul winning. It's very important. Soul winning is very important because that's where it all begins, isn't it? Once the gospel comes, the entrance of the word, the Bible says what? Brings understanding. And it brings what? It makes those who are simple wise. The proclamation of the gospel, it is the power of God unto salvation. Praise God for that. Paul says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation. But we are saying this in terms of holistic mission, the proclamation has a social aspect to it. It has to have consequences. If we only proclaim the gospel and this gospel doesn't have consequences or we are not willing to live up to the consequences of the gospel, we are missing the point. It is unfair for us to have many churches, mega churches, wealthy churches, so to speak, and very little effort, for example, towards reaching out to the street children, doing something at least. And you know what doing something means? It doesn't mean like taking all those street children and putting them in a center to do something, isn't it? Like to take care of them. It would mean even having programs that are reaching towards these families or these parents who are neglecting their children. What does he feel? So that as they are being transformed, we will, we will begin seeing a, a, a decrease in the number of street families, isn't it? was I, I love reading, and my current read is this book. It's called Run Baby Run by Nikki Cruz. How many of you have, have heard about Nikki Cruz? Nikki Cruz was a gangster, a gangster, a gang leader, a gang called Mau Mau's in New York. Okay? He was a savage. He used to smile when he saw blood flowing. I want to fry too when he sees blood flowing, eh? Blood letting. He used to hate. He used to just enjoy violence. He was a bad man. And he gives his testimony. This is his book. He, he has written it, eh? He gives how it all began. It all began. The father was a spiritualist. He was a, a you know, Mganga, child in our, in our case, eh? Those who cast out demons. When you end up on Ganga at you, he can't help you. A kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. Even the kingdom of Shetani, it can never be divided. If it is divided, it won't. So who is fooling who? Shetani na kufool, and na kupea nini? Solution. Anyway, the father was a spiritualist, the mother was a witch. So what do you think? Servants of Satan, do they know love? Do servants of Satan know love? Does Satan know love? Not at all. So will they love their children? Imagine, at one point the mother was so demon possessed and she started calling the son, now this guy, son of the devil, son of Satan. The finger of Satan is on him. And they used to, I mean, this guy used to be hated by the mother and the dad. And he ran away. And he became, the, what do we call them? Destitute. A, a child out there. And that's what led him to the streets, to the guns. Killing, raping, all those kinds of things. That was his life. 
until one day a preacher by the name David Wilkerson. Have you heard about his sermons? I want to encourage you, if you listen to sermons, go and listen to David Wilkerson's sermon. A man who preaches to a dying world like a dying man. Okay? And he went and uh, he went to the streets. Those, those places that we don't want to go to preach because they are what? Dangerous. David Wilkerson went because the Son of God came to seek and to save the lost. Where do you find the lost? In church? Are the lost in this place? You guys are not lost. You guys are very saved. God has you Anyway. They are there out there. Out there in Mount Elgon. Out there in the streets. Out there in the hostels. And David Wilkerson went and said to the, uh, Cruz, Nikki Cruz, Jesus loves you. Simple. The gospel of God is the power of God unto salvation. That is it. That's the truth. Jesus loves this guy. He knew no love. He did not know love, so he could not give what he doesn't have. One as if you will. And, and he, he told David Wilkerson, Preacher man, get out of here. The next time I see your face, I'll cut you into pieces. And Cruz was not joking. He was not joking. He used to kill, he used to stab people. David Wilkerson, he told him, it's written here from the book. You could cut me in a thousand pieces and lay them out on the streets. But every piece would, would cry out, Jesus loves you. And you'd never be able to learn from that. What has he feel? Now I'm telling you, friends, the power of the gospel. And I'll tell you a bit more about this. Nikki Cruz tried to run away from that. He could not. Okay? He could not. The power of the gospel, the proclamation of the gospel. Remember? Remember the balance between proclamation and demonstration? That is holistic mission. Holistic mission is that striking balance. The striking balance between what we say, what we proclaim, Jesus is Lord, and what we do. Do we demonstrate that? Do we demonstrate the Lordship of Christ in our lives and in the lives of, I mean, in our society? See you Is it visible in your life? Have you been transformed? Remember how we define mission. How God, the dynamic process through which God will transform this world that has been spoiled by human sin. As I told, tell you the story of David Cruz, I'm talking about human sin. Hate. Parents hating children. Children hating parents. You know, those, those kind of things. Injustices. That is caused by human sin. Greed. What has the gospel to do with greed? When the gospel is proclaimed and when you come to the kingdom of Jesus, he deals with your love for yourself. You die to yourself. You stop loving, you stop just thinking about yourself. Philippians chapter 2, what does it say? Let this attitude be in, this attitude, attitude be in you that was also in Christ. Though he was God, he did not consider himself, I mean, consider it equality to be with God. Sindio, to be equal with God. But he humbled himself to death, even death on the cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and given him the name that is above every other name. So that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Brethren, when the gospel begins to work in you, greed in Aisha, one as if you will, you start thinking when you're given a leadership position, because some of you will be leaders, some of you will be politicians. What happens? Mambos are cancer, are you scared? And you, you just get into an office, you get a tender, and come out a billionaire. You, you, that, some of those stories don't make sense, do they? And well orchestrated plots to, to, to steal from the public, these things will only be sorted 
by the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. How does it begin? Proclamation. And after proclamation, we demonstrate it. When you're given, and you don't have to be at the top of leadership, or the top, top rank, rank, presidency, and street governor, or MC. No. The small responsibilities you're given, class rep. Yes. Mugo, class reps. Yes. I'm a student leader. Those small things, that's where you begin to demonstrate the transformation that has happened in you. And once you get there and you're making policies, you're not just there thinking about how much money you will earn. You're there to think about policies that will change society. I want to tell you about a gentleman called, um, what is his name? This guy who abolished slave trade. Wilberforce. Okay? Wilberforce. He was a politician. Very eloquent. Given the gift of eloquence by God. But he was, uh, he was, he was a vagabond. I mean, he was just living for himself. Until the gospel of the Lord Jesus came to him. And he was converted. And he stopped thinking about his gifts. You know? The way God has gifted all of us. Some of us with beauty. Others with hot. You know all these gifts, eh? You are very handsome. You are very, uh, you, you are very charismatic. You, you pull the crowds, you know? You convince people. All those kind of things. Wilberforce now began to use that gift of being very, very well able to articulate certain things to now fight slave trade. A, a slave trade and slavery and you know all those things. Bonus if you he was a count, the counterpart of um, what is his name? Um, William Curry. Kairos course will tell you more about William Curry. William Curry, a, a shoemaker, okay, a, a part-time English teacher who had this burden of people who are eating each other in the hidden land and saying, I cannot sit here with the gospel and the hidden are dying there without knowing God. He went to his leaders and said, uh, church leaders. I sense God calling me to the heathen in India. And the church leaders told the young man, sit down. If God wants to reach the world, he will do that without your help or our help. See, you well. See, God can do that without your help or our help. He is sovereign. He can use angels. But he chooses not to use angels. He chooses to use you and me. As weak as we are, as forgetful as we are, God has chosen to use we, his disciples. One as if you will. We who he transforms so that we can transform society. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. David Wilberforce and many, many other people we can mention in history. People who understood the gospel of Jesus Christ and they did not limit it to what? Just proclaim nation. They coupled that with the demonstration of the kingdom of God. Jesus our Lord was a master at that. You know? He did not just meet the spiritual needs of the people. He also met the what? Physical needs. Social needs. The outcasts like Zacchaeus. You know Zacchaeus was hated. Why? He was a tax collector. Nowadays they call themselves revenue. Collectors, you don't know for county government, <laughs> revenue collectors, tax collectors, this kind. And they used to oppress people. They were used of the Roman government to oppress their own people. So he was hated. And of course, he was rightly hated because he used to steal from them. See yes. But then Jesus had a purpose for this tax collector. And he came and changed him. Zacchaeus. Who else? You know, many, many people that encountered Jesus, they were changed, not just through the words, but even through the, the deeds. He would eat with the tax, tax collectors and, and, and who else? Tax collectors and sinners. And they would ask him, who is this guy that even, if he was a holy man, he would not go to the house of who? He would not be comfortable even being touched by prostitutes. You know that prostitute that came in and, and washed his feet and did what else? 
anointed his head, washed his feet with her hair, sister's book of, and her tears. You know, that Samaritan woman at the well, you know, she knew the kind of life she had lived. But Jesus comes and tells her everything that she had done. And Jesus changes her life for good. Bona situation. Changes lives. Jesus, when he was ministering, he did not just tell people, uh, God loves you, blah, blah, blah. He used to feed them. Not once, but twice. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Not once, but several times. the disciples. Have you not something to give to these guys? They have been following me. And then Jesus says, uh, the disciples tell him, even if we would, we had all the money, where would we get all the food to feed these people? You know? And Jesus performs miracles. He goes on his mission. I love Jesus because he never left anyone. At Akisema, I have an agenda. I am going to Jairus' daughter. I mean, to, 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 is it to heal or to raise? To raise, eh? Jairus' daughter. Uh, so, wachana na mimi. I am focused. No! Everyone that Jesus met, he changed his life or her life for good. Wana And that's what brethren we are called to do. Change lives. Hallelujah. Amen. Change lives. First Corinthians, I'll end with these three verses. First Corinthians, uh, sorry, Colossians chapter 1 and verse number 10. Colossians. Chapter 1. Precisely verse 10. But allow me to read from verse 3. We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you, because we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and the love you have for all the saints and the faith and love that spring from the hope that is stored up for you in heaven. And, and that you have already heard about in the word of truth. The world, I mean, the gospel that has come to you. All over the world, this gospel is bearing fruit and growing just, at it, just as it has been doing among you since the day you heard it and understood God's grace in all its truth. You learned it from Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is a faithful minister of Christ Jesus on our behalf, and who also told, uh, told us of your love in Christ, uh, in the Spirit. For this reason, verse 9, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you, asking God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all spiritual wisdom and understanding. And we pray this in order that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and may please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God. One as if you will. Growing in the knowledge of God. Goes on and on. Verse 20 says, um, uh, verse 15, he is the image, talking about Jesus, of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him, all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things were created by him and for him. He is before all things and in him all things hold together and he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead so that in everything, he might have the supremacy. Can you hear that? Have the supremacy. Verse 19. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him. And through him. One as you say. And through who? Who? Jesus Christ the Messiah. To do what? Reconcile everything. Not some things. But everything to himself by making peace through the blood of his cross. Whether things on earth 
all things in heaven. That's the mission of God. To reconcile all things through Jesus Christ. The second verse. Uh, we read this John chapter 10 verse 10. We can read it together. Very powerful. John 10 verse 10. What does it say? Projection. I want us to read it together. A thief. Which version is this? A thief comes only to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it in abundance. The last verse. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 10. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse number 10. Are we there? Ephesians 1, 10. Again, I want to encourage you to go and read from verse 1. Verse 9 says, or rather, let's start from 7. In him, Christ, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace, that he lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding. And he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ to be put into effect when the times will have reached their fulfillment. Hyphen. To bring everything together in the Messiah. This version says, in the Messiah. Both things in heaven and in him. God is on a mission. A mission to reconcile all things to himself. To bring everyone and everything under one head, even the Lord Jesus Christ. God is on a mission to heal this broken world. And he will do that through you and me. He will do that when we proclaim the gospel, the power of God unto salvation. And we move, and when we move ahead, into demonstrating that power. And that's why he said, do not move from Jerusalem, but wait, tarry in Jerusalem, for you will be endowed with power from on high. And you will be my witnesses. Witnesses are not just people who proclaim. They are people who live. Witnessing is not just doing. It is living. It is being. Praise the Lord. It is who we are. I hope, brothers and sisters, that you're, you're beginning to see. I think this is a discussion we can keep on talking about. You're beginning to see, because that's the point, that mission is broad. God is calling us to action, and God is calling us to proclaim. You've had a statement that preach the gospel, and where necessary, use words. Have you ever heard that statement? Preach the gospel, and where necessary, use words. I think that the, the person who did this, who is uh, St. Francis of Assisi, was emphasizing more on the demonstration of the gospel. Leave it out, but don't leave proclaiming it aside. Neither should you just proclaim and don't leave it out, okay? Leave it out and preach it out. God bless you. Thank you. You can pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you. Because of this morning and the sharing of the word, we are convinced, we have heard from you, that you want us to leave out the whole gospel, because this is what you gave to us, the church, the whole church, proclaiming the whole gospel to the whole world. And you have taught us how. You are our best uh, role model. You lived it out, you preached it out. And we pray in Jesus' name that when we find forces of oppression, powers of darkness, 
bringing poverty and bringing oppression and all sorts of social injustices, we will confront them in the power of the Lord. We will not keep quiet. We will speak out. And we'll do this not in our own power, not like activists, but people who are endowed with power from on high, like ambassadors of the kingdom of God, the kingdom uh, which entails righteousness and justice and peace, shalom, in the Holy Ghost. We pray that you help us, O oh God. We can't do this by our strength. We can't do this by our own understanding. So we need you. The need in the world is overwhelming, but it is not overwhelming when you lead us, O oh Jesus, our Master. So, Father, I pray for my brothers and sisters, this Christian Union, as they engage in missions in Mount Elgon and in other places, that, Father, they, they, their fruit will be uh, long-lasting. Indeed, you called us to bear fruit and fruit that abides, fruit that lasts. And so that's my prayer even as they proclaim and demonstrate the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, the fruit that they bear will last forever. We thank you and we give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless. I think we can do more better than that. Now we can appreciate God. Somewhere. I am a third year student in the School of Education. I pursue education in arts, that is mathematics and geography. With the grace of God, I am the CU asset coordinator or asset manager. Yes, my work is basically to manage the asset. All of you are assets. <laughs> so if you see an asset not engaging in a holistic mission, you can question that. Praise the Lord. Yes, uh, we have come to the end of our service today and I want to thank all of us for attending, being partakers of the same. We really appreciate and value that so much. Making that commitment to come and to sit here is a, is a, is a, is a sign that we love God. Praise the Lord. Not all of us can do that, but it's a commitment that we are making and we, we appreciate so much. Um, also, I want to thank us for participating also in the a tour fund drive or fundraising. Yeah, you have done a good job. You can appreciate yourself for that. Yes. Uh, also, some another reminder is that those guys who are communicated to to attend Moi Girls Weekend Challenge, they are to meet Rogers at the end of the service when we conclude. So kindly note that. Um, we can be on our feet. I don't need the project.